How the heck do you even go viral on Instagram and is it even still possible in 2024? I have completed a study of every single one of my viral videos and I'm gonna share with you the exact ingredients that made these videos go viral. So if you want to blow up your Instagram account, reach millions of people and grow your following, keep watching. Since Reels first released in August of 2020, they have been unquestionably the fastest way to grow on Instagram, and compared to any other kind of post or any other strategy for growing, Reels have the most explosive growth potential because Reels have the highest likelihood to go viral. Now, while it was definitely easier to go viral back in 2021, it is definitely still possible today, and I have seen accounts with over a million followers and accounts with less than 100 followers going viral in 2024. Personally, over the last four years, I I have grown my following from less than 50,000 to now over 700,000 on Instagram. And a large part of my growth has been as a result of a consistent flow of viral videos. Now, when I say a consistent flow, that doesn't mean that every one of my videos goes viral, nor does that mean that I can predictably know every single time a video is going to pop off. There are definitely anomalies and there are definitely streaks where I'm hot or streaks where I'm cold, but every couple months having a video blow up and reach over a million people definitely gives a nice influx or a nice wave of new followers and new eyeballs on my account. Now, with all that being said, and before we even get into the strategies of today's video, I don't think that going viral should necessarily be your goal. Ultimately, going viral will kind of be like winning the lottery. It's something that's not always predictable and oftentimes will happen when you least expect it, but it can have some seriously crazy, cool, powerful implications. I believe that the majority of your content should not be created with virality in mind, and if you are trying to go viral with with every single post, you're going to be disappointed probably 99% of the time. The majority of your content should be focused on prioritizing your audience rather than the algorithm, serving rather than selling, connecting, adding value, engaging with your community, and just generally pouring into people on an individual level rather than trying to reach the masses. But with that being said, obviously you clicked on this video for a reason, so I'm going to spill the tea as to how do you actually go viral on Instagram. Now, like I said, I have grown to over 700 thousand followers in the last few years, and I have had 25 reels reach over 1 million views. That's the criteria that I'm using to define viral in this video and for this specific study that I just finished up, but you are welcome to define viral however you choose. Oftentimes inside the Insta Club Hub, we like to use the term viral for me because I believe it's more beneficial to create your own definition of viral so that you aren't comparing yourself to others. You're instead able to gauge your best posts versus your own best posts. So maybe viral for you is 10,000 views. Maybe it's 1,000 views. Maybe it's 100,000 or maybe it's a million like me. And it's gonna be different for every account because we all have different amounts of followers, different expectations, and different past histories on Instagram. Like I said, I've had 25 videos reach over 1 million views in the last four years. And one video, my most viewed video, actually is at 19.25, 19 and a quarter, almost 20 million views now. And that was actually just posted a few months Ago. So from looking at my 25 most viral posts on Instagram, what can we conclude? What are our big takeaways? Number one, first and foremost, they are all reels. In fact, despite having more than 3,000 total posts on Instagram, I haven't had a single non-reel reach a million people. I've had lots that have come close. I've had lots of photos and carousels that have reached over 900,000, but none that have reached that 1 million mark. Another way to say that is that every single one of the 25 viral posts, every single one of my 25 posts that have reached 1 million people were all reels. So that in and of itself should give you an idea as to what is more or less likely to go viral on Instagram. And really more or less likely is all we can say. Nothing is going to be a guarantee, especially when it comes to going viral. There are photos that go viral. There are carousels that go viral. There are even Instagram stories that sometimes go viral. But generally speaking, according to the averages, according to what we see in our students' accounts, in our members' accounts on Instagram every single day, and what we can see from this internal study of my own Instagram account is that on average, reels are far more likely to go viral than any other kind of post. So there you have it. That's all. I'll see you next week. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Of course, that's like the basics, right? Reels are the most likely thing to go viral, but what actually makes a reel more or less likely to go viral? Well, just a few weeks ago, I did an episode talking about the new Instagram algorithm and some of the things that the algorithm is prioritizing or showing favoritism towards right now. And one of those big key elements is shares. Share-worthy content is the kind of content that on average is going to get the most views. 
because shareworthy content is most likely to be shared. It's more likely than any other kind of content, obviously. And when a post gets shared, on average, it gets 400 additional views. So the math is pretty simple. If you get just 10 shares on average, that's 4,000 extra views. But then that share cycle can just keep spiraling because what if 10 out of the 4,000 new viewers also shared? Well, now you just repeat and you have 4,000 additional viewers. Now you have 20 shares and 8,000 extra views on your reel. So shares are really the secret sauce to getting your videos to go viral. It's the kind of engagement that on average is going to get you the most additional views and thus increase your likelihood of going viral. Now, again, I went in depth into shareworthy content uh, just a few weeks ago, but to just kind of briefly run through the five categories of what is generally most shareworthy on Instagram, it's generally something that is going to be inspiring or motivational. Think quotes, think messages, reminders, kind of heartfelt sort of thank yous. Those are oftentimes inspirational, motivational. The second kind of content that is highly shareworthy on Instagram is what I like to call a call to arms. It's essentially asking people to all come together and rally around supporting a specific cause or movement. Uh, the third thing is relatable content. That's pretty self-explanatory. The fourth kind of shareworthy content is controversial content or content that's kind of an unpopular opinion. And you'll see that come up a few times in my specific study of my viral content. And then the fifth kind of reel that is highly shareworthy is trending topics or breaking news. And that's another thing that comes up time and time again in my most viral posts. Again, though, if you want a more in-depth explanation as to what is is shareworthy? How do you create shareworthy content? And you kind of breaking down each of those five different categories. I definitely recommend checking out that episode from two weeks ago. But with all of that being said, let's get into the actual breakdown of my 25 most viral reels, my 25 reels that have reached over 1 million people. What did they have in common? Stick around until the end of today's episode, because at the very end, I'm going to play for you all 25 of those reels. So you can just have a look for yourself and see if there's maybe something that stood out to you that I I may have missed in my own analysis. It's a really great practice to get into of kind of studying other people's content because I believe that success leaves clues. And that's what we're going through today. The success of my 25 most viral reels broken down. What clues have they left behind? Number one, the first thing that 24 out of the 25 reels had 24 out of 25. That's a super high percentage. 24 out of 25 had text on the screen. The majority of them had multiple pieces of text on the screen, whether it was some sort of title or speech bubble above my head, closed captioning below, or even just labels as to who the different quote unquote characters were in the reel. 24 out of 25. So every single one of these reels, except for one of them, had text on the screen. And that might seem like a no brainer. And for many of you, that is a no brainer. For many of you, that totally makes sense. But I know there's a lot of people who still don't put closed captions on their reels. They don't put text on the screen. And I think it's just a great point to be reminded of right here, first and foremost, that text on the screen increases your likelihood of going viral. If I was to give you a bonus tip or a pro tip when it comes to text on the screen is that don't just have one. So don't just have closed captions or just a label above your head have multiple pieces of text, have the label above your head that is kind of setting the scene or hooking in the audience, but then also include closed captions, maybe below the speaker's mouth. Those two pieces of text are basically double the amount of engagement opportunities than just having one piece of text. So consider adding multiple pieces of text and that should improve your likelihood of going viral. Now, of course, there are a million different ingredients that you could look at and you could consider that might help or hurt you going viral, such as like, what color was my shirt? What color was the text on the screen? Was this filmed on my phone or a camera? What time of day was it posted? Was it scheduled or was it manually posted? There's like so many different things that we could consider, but without getting too lost in the sauce here, here are the top 10 ingredients ingredients that I found when I was looking at these 25 reels. And these are things that I think you could easily incorporate into your own reels. So coming in 10th place with two appearances in my 25 reels. So two out of the 25 reels, there were three things that appeared and are tied for 10th place. One of them is memes. Memes are super easy to use, and I was a little bit surprised that they didn't show up more frequently in my most viral posts, but I also think it kind of makes sense because I haven't started posting that many memes until recently. 
and the majority of the memes that I am posting are photo memes rather than video memes. But when I say memes, I am not referring to me lip syncing an audio. I am literally referring to a video or a quick little moment or a scene or even a photo that was taken from a trending moment, the Olympics, the office, things like that. And then I'm just adding some text to relate that scene or that clip to my niche. The easiest example that I can think of that you'll see at the end of today's episode when you actually watch these reels is a clip from The Office where I took this little snippet from a scene where Michael Scott was talking. I added the text to relate the scene to my niche and then that was basically it. So two out of the 25 most viral reels were memes. Also two out of the 25 most viral memes were breaking news. Now later we'll talk more about trending topics and viral audios and things like that, but two of them were specifically me breaking news about something happening on Instagram. Maybe there isn't necessarily that much breaking news in your industry, but maybe there are ways that you could creatively take things that are in the news and that are headlines and relate them to your niche. And then finally, tied for 10th place with two appearances was what we call listicles. And listicles is not just a funny word. Listicles means basically lists of things, giving multiple ideas, multiple recommendations, multiple tips or strategies, just basically running off a list. Most of those lists, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, were placed in the caption rather than on the actual reel itself. But it is interesting that two out of my 25 most viral reels had a list. All right, moving on now up the list in ninth place with four appearances in my 25 most viral reels is original audios. Now that might give you a clue as to some things that are higher up on the list, but four out of my 25 viral reels were me talking directly to the camera. I'm someone who posts a video of myself talking directly to the camera pretty much every single day on Instagram, and I have been doing that for pretty much the last two or three years. So that means I've likely posted seven or eight or maybe even 900 videos of myself talking directly to the camera with an original audio, and only four of them have gone viral in the last four years. So I think that percentage is relatively low. And again, I don't want to spoil anything that's higher up on the list, but generally speaking, original audio seem to be less important of an ingredient. All right, we're moving on up the list now. And I think everything else that I'm about to list is an actual essential ingredient. It's something that will really make a difference in your potential odds of going viral. I think number nine and number 10 are good things to consider, but if anything, number nine and number 10 might tell you things that you want to avoid or do less often, whereas number eight through number one are things that you should definitely at least consider if you want to go viral. And number eight on the list is including some sort of effect. Five out of my 25 viral reels had some sort of video effect placed on the reel. Some of them were on the more simple end of the spectrum where it was just like maybe slowly zooming in or zooming out on my face or kind of tracking my body movements. Some of them were much more advanced effects or more dynamic or engaging or whatever you want to call them, artistic effects. Like maybe my entire body was on fire or maybe the entire screen was kind of like dancing around and shifting or maybe there was some like crazy visual going on, some sort of like transition or something. Five out of my 25 reels that have reached over 1 million people had an effect. And I know you might be thinking, well, Brock, that's probably not that important. Five out of 25, that's a pretty low percentage. And I know I also literally just said that four out of 25 is a low percentage in terms of my original audios. But I think it's important to also remember the context, the bigger picture here of how much of these kinds of videos am I posting in general. To speak again about original audios, I'm posting hundreds of original audios every single year, and only four of them have gone viral. I don't use effects very often. In fact, I rarely use effects on my videos. And so the fact that five of my 25 viral videos had an effect tells me that I should probably use effects more often. And that's a good recommendation for you is to, when appropriate, don't overdo it, but when appropriate, include visual effects in your videos. Yes, my shirt just changed. That's because I realized that in going through this list, I forgot to list one of the categories, one of the ingredients. So this was filmed a few days later. So I hope you'll forgive me. Number seven on the list of essential ingredients is something that you might have expected to be much higher up on the list, especially if you're used to the stereotypical social media of 2022, or if you are used to the kinds of things that I often post on Instagram. And it's something that showed up in six and a half. I'll explain the half in just a minute, but six and a half out of my 25 viral reels. And that is dancing. 
So let's consider how frequently I dance on Instagram. Quite a bit, especially back in the day, like a year or two ago, it seemed like pretty much every single reel or close to every single reel, I was doing some sort of hip thrust or twerk or dance move. And so the fact that only six and a half of those dancing reels ended up going viral shows me that dancing is not essential. It's not something that you have to do. So if you're someone who doesn't want to dance, you don't want to learn the new step of choreography, don't worry, you do not have to, it's not essential. Now, the, the 0.5 that I said, six and a half, 6.5 out of 25, the little half a point comes from one of the reels that went viral. I wasn't dancing in it, but there was an effect that kind of made the whole screen look like it was wiggling. And so because the whole screen was wiggling, it kind of made my body look like I was dancing. Like it made me look like I was like swinging my hips back and forth. So it wasn't technically dancing, but it kind of looked like dancing. So I counted that as half a point towards dancing. But the fact still remains that I danced a ton and only six or six and a half out of those dancing reels actually ended up going viral viral. And so no, you do not have to dance. It is not necessary. You do not have to let your freak flag fly. You can, I don't think it's necessarily going to hurt you, but you don't have to. Moving on up sixth place on my list of things that appeared most frequently, the biggest, most important ingredients in my viral reels showed up seven times. So all three of these things that I'm about to name showed up seven times out of my 25 viral reels. They are number one, an existing audio. Now, I differentiated audios into three categories. Original audios, which we already talked about, which showed up in four out of my 25. Existing audios, where it's someone else talking or maybe someone else singing or someone else's soundbite, and then I am either lip syncing it or reusing it. And then the third category of audio that I broke up this list into is music. So actually like songs and that sort of thing, not just trending sound bites, but actual songs. So again, in sixth place with seven appearances out of the top 25 was existing audios, me using an audio that someone else has already used on Instagram. Also tied for sixth place was asking a question in the first sentence of the caption. I found this one very interesting because it's something that I don't do all the time. I'm always preaching that you should use a call to action and we'll talk about calls to action later, but with this specific category, with this specific ingredient, I'm not saying that there was a call to action. There was just kind of like an open-ended question. I didn't even say like answer below or answer in the comments or let me know. I literally just Asked an open-ended question like, have you tried this for yourself? Have you thought of this? What do you think? Who can relate? Just like those kind of open-ended questions, I think they started more genuine conversations and thus kept people engaged with the reel for longer. All right, and then the third ingredient that's in sixth place with seven appearances out of my top 25 viral reels, I hope y'all can keep all this math straight because I know it's a lot, is giving some sort of idea or even a list of ideas in the reel. For me, this looked like giving people an idea as to how to use the audio or an idea of what their hooks could be or an idea of ways that they could get more views. Just giving people a list of ideas. It's not necessarily tips or recommendations. It's literally just think about this if you haven't thought of this before. Here's a long list of ideas. And that's another thing that I should say is that most of these lists of ideas weren't like one or two. Most of the list of ideas were like 14 ideas or seven ideas or 25 ideas. And so I want you to think about what lists of ideas could you offer in your reels? Maybe if you do beginner rock climbing tips, you're going to give a list of like gear that people should check out when they're getting started. Maybe if you do toxin-free living, you're going to give out healthy swaps that people could look for at the supermarket. I think the reason that giving lists is so helpful is unlike a strategy, you're not telling people what to do. You're just kind of like, hey, here's a bunch of different things that you could try. And also there's no reason that people have to go in order down the list of ideas. Like unlike a seven step guide where if you get bored on step three, you're not gonna read step four. If you get bored on idea number four out of seven, well then you're gonna keep watching because hey, maybe idea number five is good or maybe idea number six is something you haven't considered before. So with that being said, I want you to consider including lists in your reels. All right, we are now in the top five ingredients that appeared most frequently in my 25 most viral reels. And there's actually two things that are tied for fifth place with 11 uses in my top 25. And that is number one, a call to action. And number two, a wait for it or a plot twist. 
A call to action is pretty self-explanatory. It's me saying something such as, like this post, save this reel, share this with a friend. And interestingly enough, there wasn't one singular call to action that stood out or appeared more or less frequently than the rest. It seemed pretty balanced amongst the 11 appearances between asking my audience to comment, to save, to like, or to share. But just the fact that I was telling them to take an action inspired more action, thus creating more engagement, and thus helping the reel reach more people. The more interesting ingredient that's tied for fifth with 11 uses is this sort of like plot twist or unexpected element or like a wait for it type of moment. I think this is essentially a kind of hook. If I was to summarize it, it's a kind of hook that keeps people watching. It makes them like, ooh, what happens next? Or what happens at the end of this reel? Or what does this mean? What's this person about to say? This sort of like plot twist element keeps people on the edge of their seat. And so when they're scrolling, they don't know what the reel is going to be about or they don't know how it's going to finish before they scroll away. Because the average viewer decides in like a second or two whether or not they're going to keep watching the reel. So if in that one to two seconds, there's something that kind of makes them curious and makes them like, wait, what's going to happen? What's happening next? What's the unexpected element? It can kind of make them stick around um, and want to watch the entire reel. In fourth place with 14 appearances out of my 25 viral reels were again, two ingredients. The first ingredient was a short caption. Now, I know a lot of you are probably asking, well, Brock, what about long captions? Long captions showed up in about 10 or 11 out of my viral reels, but short captions showed up more frequently by showing up in 14 of the viral reels. And by short captions, I mean two sentences or less. And so even though there might be this thought out there that a long caption takes longer to read and thus keeps people paying attention to the reel for longer, which improves your watch time, and while that is all true on paper, it's interesting that at least in practice, with my 25 most viral reels, the ones with shorter captions were more likely to go viral than the ones with long captions. The second ingredient that's tied for fourth place is music. Again, earlier I told you that there were three categories of audio that I kind of broke this list down into. Original audios that I made myself, existing audios that were made by other people and then I reused them, and then this third category of music. Using music or songs was the number one audio-based ingredient that affected whether or not my reel went viral. And this is extra interesting for me when I consider the fact that the majority of my reels are talking head original audio. The second kind of audio that I use most frequently is using other people's existing audios. And the kind of audio that I use least frequently is music or songs. And so the fact that that was the one that most regularly went viral for me was interesting. And that tells me that in the future, I need to use more music in my reels. Now, unfortunately, I can't go back and check whether the audio was trending at the time that I posted it, but I do have a decent memory as to those reels that I posted. And of the 14 that used music, I would say roughly half of them used a song that was trending at that time, like a song that was currently on the charts or even had the little arrow next to it and said that it was trending, but not all of them did. So it's not absolutely necessary that the music that you're using is trending. It's just necessary that the music that you're using fits the video. But now, alas, with all of that being said, we are into the top three, the three biggest key essential ingredients, at least in my viral videos. And in third place, with 16 appearances in my 25 viral reels, was jokes. And I think that this will make the most sense when we remember shareworthy content and that relatable content is one of the most shareworthy things on all of Instagram. Relatable jokes, super easy to share, super easy to send to a friend, to share on your story, to send in your group chat, to tag someone in the comments, and those shares equate to more views. So 16 out of my 25 most viral reels had some sort of funny component. They weren't necessarily going to be teaching something, they weren't gonna be very educational or even that quote unquote valuable for my followers. They were just kind of something lighthearted and funny. In second place, with 20 appearances out of my 25 viral reels, was a length of less than 10 seconds. So while it is true that any length of reel can go viral, and I did have one reel go viral that was well over 20 seconds, on average, yes, shorter is better. So when you are creating a reel, if your goal is to go viral, try to keep it short. Less than 10 seconds is really ideal here. And again, it's really interesting to consider this when you consider the fact that the majority of the reels I post are longer than 10 seconds. Yet the majority of the ones that went viral 
were less than 10 seconds. All right, and last but not least, number one, the most common ingredient amongst all of my viral videos that showed up in 24 out of the 25 videos was text on the screen. And now before you click away because you're like, oh my gosh, did I really wait this whole time just to hear that I need text on the screen? Number one, yes, it is a good reminder for all of us that, hey, you should have some sort of text on the screen in your reels. But what I found was that there wasn't just one piece of text. On average, in my viral reels, there was three elements of text. Now, what do I mean by three elements of text? I mean, number one, there was some sort of title or headline or label above the character's head, oftentimes my head in the reel, that was kind of giving context or asking a question or setting the scene or at least labeling what the video was going to be about. Then there was a second element of text that was below the speaker's head that was usually the closed caption or subtitles of what they were saying. And then there was a third element of text, which in many cases was the call to action, or in some cases was just kind of a little blurb or a little joke here or there, or even just an emoji that would pop up usually on one of the sides of the screen. And I think having these multiple elements of text just kept people engaged so that if people were watching on mute, they could still watch the reel. And if someone was watching for the first time, there might've been something they missed. And so they wanted to watch it a second time. Maybe they missed the first two seconds of the video itself because they were busy reading the hook that I typed up above my head. So then they're going to watch the reel a second time to catch the beginning part. Having text is essential. It's one of those key ingredients in every single one of your reels, not just if you want them to go viral, but if you want them to be engaged with at all. Again, there are so many different ingredients and different factors that likely went into these 25 viral reels. But in my opinion, these were the top 10 ingredients that showed up most frequently but I really encourage you to watch these 25 reels that I'm about to play for you and think about why do you think they went viral? What common threads do you think led to the success of each one of these videos? And then how can you incorporate those ingredients into your own content? Ultimately, if you learn to dissect people's content as you're scrolling through your social media feed, as you're scrolling through Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, whatever, if you can train your brain to pick up on those key elements that are keeping you engaged and that are hooking you in the first place and that are making you swipe and get bored, then it will improve your own skills as a content creator, thus helping you create better quality content that is more likely to go viral. Well, uh, I think my work here is done for today. See you tomorrow. Have you ever tried this? No? Well, why don't you try it? Turn, turn, turn. <laughs>
p.m. I haven't done anything productive, baby. Breaking news on Instagram, there seems to be an ongoing glitch that is causing a few things. Number one, a lot of people are unable to access their Instagram app. Number two, a lot of people are being told that their account has been disabled. And because of this, it seems that number three, a lot of people's following seems to be drastically dropping in just a matter of minutes. My own following personally dropped over 6,000 followers in the last 24 hours. And a lot of people have been experiencing something very similar. Instagram has yet to make a public announcement regarding what's going on with the platform. They could be cleaning up a lot of spam and fake accounts, which could be the reason why a lot of our followings are dropping. But a lot of people who are not spammers and who do not have fake accounts have also been experiencing the inability to access the app, the inability to log in, and even a warning that their account has been disabled. I myself haven't even been able to open my Instagram app for the last 24 hours, and I'm only posting this because a member of my team is able to open the app on their phone. I'll do my best to keep you updated as I learn more information about what's going on. And please do me a favor by sharing this post so that other people can find out what's going on as well. P-I-L-L-I-G-A-M, Billy Gap, and it means, do I look like I give a- Just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called garbage can, not garbage cannot. Remember that. Thank you so much for watching today. Best of luck going viral in the future, and I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. What key elements did I miss, or what ingredients did you pick up on from my reels that you're gonna incorporate into your own? Thanks for watching, and as always, happy networking.